Amen Thompson doesn't look like any other player in the NBA. Well, that's actually not true at all. He shares a striking resemblance with his identical twin Asar, but what I mean is his skill set is incredibly unique, as was his path to the league. The Thompson twins became the first elite prospects to emerge from the Overtime Elite Academy, which only added to the uncertainty some already had about Amen due to his lack of a jump shot. So despite his absurd athleticism and thrilling play style, Amen was somewhat polarizing as a prospect. Fueling those who were skeptical of Amen being drafted fourth overall, he actually spent a decent portion of his early rookie season in the G League, furthering the notion that he was too raw to contribute. But by the home stretch, he'd earned a starting spot as the Rockets were playing their best basketball of the year. Amen averaged 12 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists per game on 60% true shooting after the All-Star break, and the team was statistically better with him on the floor. That combination of production and efficiency while playing on an actual 500 team is impressive for any rookie, but especially one like Amen who still has so much potential to tap into. The jury is very much still out on Young Amen, but I'm willing to say now that although his game is unconventional, I expect him to be a star in this league. The foundation of all Amen's success and potential is the fact that he is, in my eyes, the single best athlete in the NBA today. No 6'7 player is meant to have such a lightning quick first step. It's foolish to try to pick a man up at half court like this because you are effectively rolling out the red carpet for him to blow by you. All it takes is a little hesitation here for a man to teleport past DeJounte Murray for a little double clutch dunk, flashing his vertical athleticism, which is also insane. With a 40 plus inch vertical leap at his size, with his speed, a man careens towards the rim and delivers jaw dropping finishes, acrobatically avoiding defenders or explosively finishing over them. Look at him spin into three defenders here and simply sky around them. That is outstanding body control, both on the ground and in the air. Thompson's ability to skillfully maintain balance at high speeds is quite impressive. This is an explosive yet graceful spin move. All this absurd athleticism makes Thompson a weapon in transition where he can consistently get a full head of steam, and at times simply beat everybody down the court. But along with his raw speed at full throttle, a man can decelerate and dance around defenders with an impressive array of euros and inverted euro steps. Although his freakish athleticism is most devastating in transition, Amen has numerous routes to the rim in the half court too. He's already among the most effective cutting wings in basketball, not just because of his physical ability, this sort of bounce off two feet on a standing dunk is ridiculous and makes him a legitimate weapon in the dunker spot in a way few wings are, but also because of his feel, as Amen consistently identifies opportunities to catch defenders sleeping off ball. Amen gives the ball up, and as Scoot digs in to help from the nail, he slips behind him for an easy dunk. Amen also scored with above average efficiency as a roll man, also rare for a wing. Look at the burst to catch up to this pass thrown out in front of him, then take off from about 10 feet out and just glide around Paolo. Amen is also already the best offensive rebounder in the NBA at his position. Per 36 minutes, he averaged 3.8 offensive boards last season, making him the most productive per minute wing in the league there. Amen's quick off his feet in all situations, and his phenomenal second jump allows him to corral his own misses before anyone else has a shot. The second this ball hits the glass, Amen is already springing up for a putback. So, thanks to all these different paths, Amen lives at the rim. A whopping, and I mean whopping, 63% of his shots came in the restricted area last season, and he finished quite effectively, making better than 68% of those attempts. Amen isn't perfect around the rim, he basically thinks he can finish anything, so he can overestimate his ability and force attempts, and his touch can be off, particularly with his left hand. But on a per play basis, he's already among the most dominant rim finishing wings in the NBA, and he ranked second in dunks among all wings, despite his limited minutes and rookie status. 
Along with his ridiculous athleticism, Thompson is a tremendously skilled ball handler with excellent paint footwork. This is a devastating behind the back move to take his defender out of the play, then he gathers, sells an extremely convincing fake laydown pass, and hits an inverted Euro step into a little floater off the glass. That's nasty. A man is highly effective using hesitations and has an explosive crossover, and while his handle isn't perfect, it's exceptional for his size. And he has remarkable playmaking potential. I viewed a man as an elite passing prospect, and although he didn't have the ball in his hands enough to rack up big assist numbers as a rookie, he still flashed special playmaking ability. The velocity on a men's one-handed live dribble passes has always amazed me. The control as he whips this thing is nuts, and he can fire these passes from a variety of angles given his height, and is extremely creative in terms of his deliveries. Look at him fire this jumping, one-handed bounce pass in transition on the money. His vision and deception also stand out. He is staring down the wing shooter here to move Johnny Juzang into that passing lane and free up the corner shooter, and he rips this accurately and with velocity while in midair. Neither a man's eyes nor his body tip off where he's going with the ball here, and he can again adjust while in the air to feed Landale a wide open dunk without ever alerting THT to the fact that the big is slipping behind him. A men's athleticism in the open court really stresses defenses, and he's a damn good transition playmaker. Pair that with his elite rebounding, and he has the potential to be as devastating a grab-and-go player as anybody in the league. And here's some more of his deception. Watch a men fake the chest pass to Green to move the defender up to him, and fluidly, all in one motion, instead dart this pass over his head to a now wide-open Brooks. His understanding of how to manipulate defenses is impressive, and I was consistently struck by his poise and patience surveying the floor as a prospect. And he pairs this with the ability to hang in the air and improvise laydown passes to cutters, who he has an excellent eye for, or make wraparound passes that only an athlete of his caliber can make. And he can use fake passes to set up his own scoring too. He really sells the fake pass to the roller here to get Plumlee out of position, then explosively Euro steps around him for an easy layup. Amen is also a very strong connective passer. He has excellent feel and isn't someone the ball has to stick to. Here, he's cutting himself as he spots Jabari Smith cutting and he sneaks this in. This bodes very well for his ability to scale alongside other ball handlers and fill multiple roles, specifically as a short roll passer especially considering the athletic threat he poses coming downhill. And a men's feel extends to all situations. He can run handoffs for you, and even off of offensive rebounds, his head is on a swivel to detect open shooters, and his court mapping is strong. So I think a men will be an awesome passer, both on and off ball, in transition and in the half court, but as I'm sure you all know, there is one major flaw with the men's offensive game. He can't shoot. To become an offensive focal point as an on-ball creator, a man needs to add a respectable pull-up jumper or floater game. Otherwise, teams will just concede these intermediate looks to a man playing drop coverage or going under the screen entirely, and they'll be able to play off him in isolation situations so that even with his insane athleticism, it's difficult for him to get past them. This is what happened to a man his rookie season, and it made him inefficient out of pick and roll, and especially in isolation. He did find some success with his floater, shooting over 50% on a small sample size, but he shot just 28% on all jump shots, which is brutal. His lack of shooting is also obviously a problem off-ball. A man ranked as a 5th percentile spot-up player this season, and often simply passed up on wide-open threes, allowing defenses to help off him without punishment. And I'm not optimistic about a men's jump shot. His upper and lower body look disjointed, he has a pronounced hitch, and has below average touch. Although the fact that his free throw numbers have always been respectable indicates his touch is not broken. The mechanics are a big problem here. But a man looks uncomfortable shooting off the catch or pulling up, and the numbers are awful. With time, I'd argue a reasonable expectation for a man is that he becomes a low volume, 30%-ish three-point shooter. I do expect him to improve with NBA coaching and the urgency there is to develop that trait, but I'm certainly not expecting a miracle.
And I am almost never one to plant my flag down on the success of a non-shooting wing. Most perimeter players cannot overcome that limitation to become effective enough on or off ball offensively, but Amen is the exception. Because here's the thing, Amen excels at everything around shooting. He legitimately has the potential to be the best transition player in basketball, the best rebounding wing in basketball, a uniquely effective role man and cutter, an exceptional ball handler and passer for his size, and his greatest potential as a player is in something we haven't even touched on yet, his defense. This is a 100th percentile athlete with a 7 foot wingspan who has excellent instincts and cares about the defensive end. I don't think it's at all unreasonable to expect a man to become one of the best defenders on the planet. As a rookie, he ranked as a 97th percentile isolation defender. He checks every box on this possession, applying ball pressure to Luka, beating him to his spot, withstanding this forearm shiver, then reaching and forcing a turnover. Amen has incredible lateral agility and hip fluidity. He seamlessly sticks with a smaller guard here, is all over this spin, and uses his elite length to easily block this. He again slides all the way downhill with Halley here before blocking him and having the wherewithal to knock the ball off Halley so the Rockets gain possession. Amen's length and leaping ability empower him to deliver some huge recovery blocks when he does find himself trailing the play, and he can affect ball handlers out of pick and roll consistently with these rear view contests. Amen also has amazing hands, having averaged two steals per 36 minutes. If the ball is exposed for a split second, he has phenomenal instincts and the ability to force clean strips, and he's savvy about going for these both on and off ball. Ant turns his back for a moment, and the ball is gone. This ability also allows a man to hang in on switches against bigs, as he will attack the ball if it's exposed, and particularly excels at doing so as players attempt to back him down. In fact, Amen was posted up 32 times this season and notched a steal on 6 of those possessions, almost 20% of the time. Amen also has the tools to be an effective low man, and he held opposing players 5% below their average field goal percentage inside of 6 feet this year, a strong mark for a wing, and notched a block per 36 minutes. He still has some lapses in focus and effort, as is natural for a young player, but the traits he possesses on defense are mouthwatering. Elite lateral mobility, hands, length, rebounding, and very impressive rim protection for a wing. That is a hyper-versatile weapon. So, even with his complete lack of shooting at the moment, I can't see a man failing. He can impact the game in too many areas in a way few on the planet can. This isn't just a freak athlete. This is a smart, engaged, instinctual, 6 foot 7 freak athlete with great handles in playmaking. If you check all those boxes, I'm in. It's almost impossible to write off an NBA player based on any one trait alone. Guys like Zion and Giannis obviously dominate the league without a semblance of a jump shot, and if you're thinking, well, they're among the greatest athletes we've ever seen, so is a man. And I am not comparing him to those guys. I especially do not think he has that sort of scoring ceiling because he can't go through people like they do. My point is, players who are exceptional elsewhere can be the exceptions. A men's path to success might look different than what was initially advertised. As a prospect, many viewed a man as a jumbo-sized point guard, but until he can at least develop a more consistent floater game, which I'm more optimistic about than his jump shot, he won't be the lead ball handler for an offense. I see him more as a do-it-all wing, using his athleticism and feel to change the game in numerous ways. Taking over in transition, cutting, rolling, being an offensive connector, guarding multiple positions defensively, bringing some rim protection. And if he can just become close to an Aaron Gordon level shooter, who's 32% from deep for his career, and can sometimes keep defenses honest with his shot in the corner, but mostly just uses his athleticism to kill you as a cutter and offensive rebounder, then I think Amen will be a good enough half-court offensive player to have an undeniable star-level impact because of how much he excels elsewhere. It won't look like other elite players, but that's the beauty of it. You don't see dudes like Amen. The Rockets have plenty of shiny young assets. Shangoon, Jalen Green, Jabari Smith, now Reed Shepard. 
but I have been saying their true gem is a man Thompson. If he develops properly, then this man will be a force to be reckoned with and it'll be a process with him, but I can't wait to see where he's at in year two and where he ends up.